There's a good one. Head shaking like crazy. Be out here where I can land him here if we get lucky enough to get a hand on him. Well, he's down there trying to break me off on the rocks. Hey, all right, nice jump. Nice jump, buddy. Good job. Come here. Come here. Ah. Another beanie. That barbie took out of there. Oh, nice rainbow. All right, bud. Hello folks, today we're going to be fishing for rainbow trout. We're fishing on a river that's basically right in my backyard. I, I grew up fishing it. Uh, we're going to be going for some big rainbow trout. Hopefully we'll hook a few for you. We're going to be using bass tactics today on rainbows, so stay tuned. We'll show you how. Angler's Experience is proudly sponsored by Crestliner, leader by innovation. Tobler Marina, your one-stop boat shop. Oxart, your single source supplier. Lincoln Electric, the welding experts. Easy Loader, all boat trailers are not created equal. And Honda Marine, it's all about power. Big fish, guys, big one. Oh yeah. Boy, he's thrashing me hard. I don't know if we're gonna get him in or not. This is a big one. Holy smokes, he just pummeled that big minnow bait. Come here, buddy. Find a spot to bring you in here. If I can get you that far. Feels like a real heavy fish, guys. He's not bad, he's not a super giant, but he's sure a nice fish. I'll take him all day long, that's for sure. Wait out here. Oh yeah, come here buddy. Stay on there. Let me get my hands on you. Let me get my hands on you. Okay. Oh yeah. Hang on. What a nice fish. Oh, look at them dark spots, I just love them. I just love them to death. Beautiful fish. That's a little bit better fish there. That one's probably pushing around 16 inches. Yep, that's a beauty. All right, buddy, back home. There you go. Folks, the bait we're using today, if you've been following the show, you'll, you know I use it for just about everything. And I do that because it works. I mean, it's a simple bait and it catches fish, but it's the Berkeley three inch bass minnow. And you know the color is just going to depend on on the bait fish that you have in a particular stream or or lake or river that you're working, but it's a simple bait. And if you really want to focus on catching the biggest trout in a particular drainage, you're going to do it with these minnow baits. Now you're not going to do it in the spring of the year. It's going to have to be something towards the end of July uh, through October. 
and the biggest rainbows are going to hit these minnow baits. You can come in here with, you know, you can fly fish with streamer flies, big streamer patterns, and have good luck, but nothing's quite as lifelike as this, and, and that's what it really takes to draw those big old rainbows out, because they're, they're extremely smart. This river we're fishing here today, it runs through a city of 300,000 people around us, and it gets hammered, you know, but as you, you know, you, you can get out there and catch those fish with it, and you just got to be able to have confidence in it and work it. All we're doing is threading it up on a 16th ounce jig head, just a straight lead jig. It's real simple. The bait's got a back and a belly. You want to always make sure that the back is up. You just pierce it through like this, run it up on there, pop it out. Now as it travels through the water, the belly portion's on the bottom, the back's on the top, and that's it. You just work that bait along, but those big rainbows just eat it up. Oh, oh, there's an honoring one. That there's an honoring one. Coming at us. I don't think he's super big. I can't tell. He's just so honoring out there in that current. Let's see what happens here. I'm not here to a landing spot if we can get lucky enough to land him. Oh, he's pulling down hard. Oh, what a gorgeous fish. Man. Just love them. Come here, buddy. No, don't hurt yourself. Hang on. I'm going to let you go. Hang on. Hang on. You're in the corner of the, corner of the mouth. Barbless, pop it right out. Boy, that's a beauty. Look at the red continuation down there towards the belly. Golly. What a beauty. All right, bud. Let's get you back in. Oh, there's another one, guys. There's another one right there. Boy, they're sitting in here. Oh, that's another good fish right there. Come here, buddy. These barbless hooks, you really got to be easy. Let your rod do the work. And running this fire line, it's got no stretch, and you really got to take it easy with that because they can, they can pop hooks real easy. Oh, yeah. Nice, bright one. Oh, he's head shaking bad. Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh yeah, this is a pretty fish, guys. Let's see if we can get lucky enough to get him in here to put a hand on him. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. Oh, what a beauty. Oh, guys, this is a, is this a cut bow? This might possibly be a cut bow. Yeah, look at this, guys. Look at this, a big, a big cut bow. Oh, come here. Look at that. Oh, what a beautiful cut bow, guys. This is a cross between a rainbow. You can see underneath it's got the cutthroat slashes, but yet he's got the rainbow spots and the rainbow marking. That is a beautiful, beautiful cut bow right there. God, what a gorgeous fish. Boy, a big toothy guy. Beauty. Nice, thick, and healthy. It's like how we like to see him right there. There you go, buddy. Thank you. One of the mistakes that people make when they're fishing these minnow baits, we use them for bass, you know, large mouth and small mouth, and people tend to really want to snap them. And when I'm fishing smallies, I'll get it down there low and I'll really pump it. The thing you got to do when you, when you transition over to fishing these trout, especially in a river situation like this, it's just little tiny twitches. And the reason being, a small minnow in a lake has no resistance against them, just the water resistance, so he's able to make quick moves. In a river, when they've got current pushing on them, they can't blast as far. They still squirt fast, but they can't blast as far because they got that additional current dragging against them. So what you want to do is just really pop it slow, just a little short. You're maybe moving that bait three, four, maybe five inches instead of in a lake, you'd be popping it, you know, 12, 16 inches. But just slow it down when you're fishing for these rainbows. And a lot of time, if you get to, to working it too fast, I've had fish follow it up and I'm pumping it quick and they'll actually spook them because it's not natural for something to travel that far and that fast. So when you come out, just remember to get out of the bass mode, even though you're using a bass lure, 
and just slow your slow your twitches down, just little tiny pops, pop, 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 and that'll help you catch those fish. Bring them in real slow. They look like a bad rainbow. Beautiful fish. Come here, buddy. I'll let you go. Up here on the bank. There we go. Oops, come here, buddy. Hang on. Nice, beautiful river rainbow. See if we can get him to keep hitting those minnow baits. Not a big guy, probably 15 inches maybe. Beautiful cerise cheeks, gorgeous fish. Getting back in the water here. There's another one right there. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, he's jumping out there. Oh, that's a fighty. Huh? Oh, look at that one jump. That's a nice fish, guys. Wore himself out on them couple big jumps there. Come here, buddy. Slide you up in here. I'll let you go back. Come here. Come here. Get you up here in these rocks. And there I go. Boy, you're not very long, but boy, you're a stocky guy. Oh, there's another nice one. Just beautiful spots on them. Big ol' eye. Pretty fish. God created trout for the beauty, that's for sure. There you go, buddy. Come on. Come on, darling. Come here. Oh, there he goes. Oh, come on, barbless hook. Stay in there. Oh, man, what a beautiful fish. He's trying to break me off. Come here, buddy. Oh, I hear a little bullet. Look at the shoulders on that fish. Wow, that is a thick, girthy fish right there. Oh, not ready yet. Not ready yet. Oh, there we go. There's a nice fish. One of them big bows we've been looking for. Whew, all right. Look at that fish. That is a beauty. Nice, thick back. Beautiful colors, healthy chrome. All right, bud, get you back in there. There you go. When you're fishing jigs in rivers like this, one of the things that you have to make a good decision on is the weight of your jig head. You don't want it to be too light, but yet you don't want it to be too heavy. So what's the best way to go about that? Well. The current is gonna to dictate to you what size of heads you're gonna to have to have. I'll usually start out light. Today we're running a 16th ounce lead head ball jig. And, and how I found out that that was gonna be the right size is basically what I would do. Let me reel this up here real quick. You cast the jig out like so. I wanna be able to flip my bale and I wanna be able to feel the bottom, but yet I don't have to reel. There's enough current there that it's taking my bait down through the hole without me having to reel any slack, but yet I'm still feeling contact on the bottom. If I was to move up to an eight, I'd cast it out, but I would have to reel. I'd have to keep pulling it up out of the rocks, and, and the eighth would just fall down to the rocks, and I'd get stuck a bunch, and you know, you're going to be losing a lot of gear, and you're not going to be fishing productively, but the best way to figure it out is just quarter cast, and when you don't have to reel like this here, you know the current's doing all the work for you, and then when the, the bait gets down in front of you, you just crank it back and drift it through there again. But make sure that you get the right size weight on. 
because you need to be in the strike zone for the longest time possible, and that's the only way you're going to do it, by selecting the proper jig head. Oh, man. Oh, he's coming at us. Holy smokes, that fish. I thought that fish was off. He was coming at us so hard, coming at us so hard that it felt like he was off. Oh, man. This thing is hot. You don't think he's that big. Look at him going out there. Oh, no, 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 no. Working me over on those rocks. Come here. God, he is not that big. I mean, he is just ornery. Buddy, you get an A-plus for heart, man. Oh, he's still not ready yet. Come here. Oh, he's a cut bow. That's why. He's a hybrid. That's why. You got the cuts there and the rainbow stripe. That's why he was fighting so hard. These guys are just tyrants. Oh, he wasn't coming off. That barbed hook out of his mouth. Boy, oh, look at there. Another, that's just, man, gorgeous. Man, I love you guys. Okay, there you go. Oh, there's a, oh boy. Oh, that's an ornery one there. Come here, darling. Oh, don't get back out there, come on. Oh boy, this is a beauty here. Oh, come on. Come in here. Come here, baby. There we go. Oh, that's a beauty right there, folks. Let me tell you something, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous rainbow. Look at that fish. That don't get no prettier than that, look at that. Fish there is probably 18, 19 inches at least. Golly, what a gorgeous fish. Let's get her back in the water. There she goes. All right. Part of the challenge when you're river fishing like this, you can have the, the perfect bait on that you know that you know is going to catch fish, but the next step is placing the bait. In this particular hole here, we've got three main runs. We got one on the outside, we got one through the center, we got one right here at the base of my knees running out. And you can come out here and just flail away and cast, but what you need to do to make the percentage cast is you got to look for the seams. On the far bank, there's an eddy next to kind of where the old tire's at. And there's a slack line running through there. You want to hit the edge of that. These other riffles coming through, we've got a few boulders in there that are breaking it up. And they're creating alleys that run down through there. And the place you want to cast is right on the edge of those alleys. You want to be bordering, if this is the fast water, you want to be bordering the fast water, whether it be the outside or the inside. You want to find those lanes. Those lanes are feeding lanes. I've been fishing for a lot of years, so I can look out there and see them and know where to cast. The polarized glasses help, obviously, but if you don't know how to see them, or maybe you can look out there and you can't find them, but they're in front of you, go up to the bank, pull a bunch of dried leaves off, and set them in the water. As those leaves go down through, they'll get stuck in those feeding lanes, and you'll see three or four of them start to develop. In this particular one here, we'd probably see six or seven of them develop. And what you do, if you watch those, where they get trapped, but they're still moving, but the, the river's moving faster than the leaves, that's where you want to throw at. So just get yourself some dried leaves and throw them out there and just sit back and watch. And that, those leaves will show you where the holes are. And that's how you learn how to fish the pockets. a nice one here. Oh, come on, darling, get up here. We just want to show you off. Come on, baby. Oof.
Come here. I can hardly get my hand around that one. Look at that, folks. Look at that. It's a beautiful rainbow. All right. Hope you're starting to believe in minnow baits for big trout now. All right, now let's get you back in there. Wow, what a nice fish. Just girthy. See you later. Well, folks, the sun's heading behind the hill. It's time for me to head home, but we had a heck of a good day out on the water today. I tell you, it's one of the best days I've had on this river, and it's all due to this little minnow bait right here. And Hopefully, I gave you enough knowledge and insight that you can take this bait and confidently go down to your local river and do the same as we did. So, hope you enjoyed the show. Look forward to seeing you next week.